Hey, what's going on? He Jones, bottom to the top hoops. Black Elvis, we in the building. Yes, sir, we in the building. Bright and early on a Monday. Yo, man, we excited. Talking about a lot of good things. Before we do that, make sure you check us out on YouTube, Apple TV, Spotify, definitely all of those platforms where you consume your content. L, man, I've been watching uh, over the weekend, and I noticed that uh, they had a top flight uh, showcase that was broadcasted on ESPN with some of the top players in the country, including uh, Musa Diabate and uh, Jaden Hardy. Um, Frank Collins, a lot of the top players in the country, which was great to see basketball on a Sunday, right? And then yeah. I also noticed, um, you know, Hoop Group had a big one this weekend. And then uh, obviously Gaucho Round Ball has been going on. So we got a little bit of basketball, Al, man. What you feel about it? I feel good. I feel good because at least they're making that effort to keep it going, man, keeping these kids athletic, keeping them, um, you know, working out and engaged. Yeah, man. And, and, you know, let's just talk about really quickly the three steps to, to, to run an event, I think, if you choose to do so. Uh, and I know a lot of people are doing different things. I think that the, the, if you're going to do something, first, right, temperature checks. Also, knowing the capacity of your venue, if it's inside, if you're at a 300-seat a, 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 a gym and you want to maintain social distancing, Let's make sure we measure those seats and those bleachers out so you can figure out what your capacity is based on having social distancing. So that might be 100 uh, people in the crowd or whatever, it might be 50 people, whatever it is for you, you might have extra baseline space on top of the bleachers, whatever that case may be. So temperature checks, bleachers, and make sure everybody who's a non-participant, meaning if you're not a coach or a player, whether you're security, you're, you're, you're cooking some food if that's allowed, if you're a parent, make sure you wear a mask. Yeah. I think those three things can help you mitigate um, the spread and not have a super spreader event. Um, I don't think anything's foolproof because you still got players that could be in asymptomatic. But I think with that being said, that's the safest way to do it. Absolutely. So with these, these events that are happening, um, I found it interesting, man, that, that, that players now – are, are, are getting a chance to compete. And it's almost like you're honing in on the top level talent because the event organizers need to make it beneficial. So you're seeing a lot of the top kids playing on these platforms. How does that help the event organizer and how does that help the kid? Well, first things first, it helps the event organizer because it makes their tournament bigger. It's more credible. You ain't playing against nobody. You got to be playing against some high-level competition in order for you to start getting those eyeballs. Right, and, and eyeballs. And, and you know, it, 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 it makes the job of the writers and the bloggers easier because now instead of going to picking between 17 events, there may be only three. Even if you're only watching it on one of the streaming platforms, you know, you could lock in instead of saying, oh, man, I'm trying to catch Monteverde versus Oak Hill. But over here, OSL is playing against Putnam. But, you know, there's a good local one with St. Ray's is playing against Stepanak. So um, there's a little bit more concentration. Um, and, and there's always a downside, L. The, the, the little guy gets affected, right? The yeah. guy who's a D3 player trying to make it up to D2, a D2 guy trying to make it to, to, to D1. They don't get as many opportunities. So, you know, there's definitely a space for mm -hmm. people to do showcases and clinics and camps for those mid-level kids that need to get looks. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we understand elite, but more kids fall in the middle rather than the elite side of it. What's your thoughts? Absolutely. Absolutely. What's your thoughts on that, Al? I just think we're looking good right now. You know what I mean? Like, okay. you know, with the state of the world, with mm -hmm. the pandemic, yep. you know, with the presidency and the election, you know, I'm glad they're finding time and finding venues for these kids to still be active. That's all I'm happy because like, you know, shout out to my people's um, Boo, uh, Dana, you know, Rowdy, they doing this uh, show off the grid, high school football show. Nice. Together is really nice, and you know you get a chance to see that 
like the PSAL has no football at all. It's completely shut down. What about the kids that got scholarships? What about the kids that got looks? Like, you know, and you got to give props to the CHSAA because they figured it out. They said, you know what? We not we might not be able to do contact sport with equipment, but what we can do is skill, and we can have seven on seven, and we can show the skill set. You know what I mean? And I thought that was cool because they're doing something. They're being proactive. Right, you know, right. So Still giving the kids a platform. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, go ahead. And you just educated me, man, because I didn't know they was doing that. So shout out to all of the people on the athletic side of the CHSA. So, Al, that brings me into my next topic, man. Um, let's talk a little bit about the importance of film in this 2021 um, uh, recruiting state where players are not being able to be seen. It's a dead period right now by college coaches, hopefully with the vaccine and, and, and some of the restrictions that the coaches will be able to come out. But you look at how important the role of film is playing because as we talked on a prior show, how the NCAA has instituted that rule where they're giving, you know, student athletes a fall sports their year back. And they just uh, talked about allowing kids who are playing JUCO to get a year back. So if you're a mm. JUCO freshman, you can be a freshman next year again. Wow, that's major. Or, or you can go and play next year and then have three years of NCAA eligibility with a JUCO degree. Mm. So kids are benefiting, man, and, and I think that the governing bodies are trying to do the right thing. So jumping back into that film, L, this is something that you've probably been ahead of the game on for a really long time. So talk a little bit about what your uh, perspective, experience, and you know, if you could name drop a, little, a couple of the kids that you work with and how you think it helped them in terms of creating content to help with their recruitment. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, most of us, when we're kids, that's, af you know, that's athletes and they're trying to really get to it. You know, most of us are really, how they say, you know how like they tell you to date up? Well, kids want to go higher than really probably where their game is. Right, you know? right. But I can honestly say film helps give that image, at least the image to get the coach to take interest, yes. to send his assist, one of his assistants out to really check you out, send you a, a, a letter, I'm interested, and then maybe they want to catch you at one of these camps or maybe catch you at, you know, at, at one of these um, showcases. Yep. But the bottom line, I think that we're working, man. We're, we're, we're moving. Yeah, man. And, and just to that point, as you said, the film may not get you the scholarship, but the film will or could get you the look or could raise it the helps. Head. Yeah, you you know, you know, you send it out, you 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 throw caution to the wind and, and, and you send it to Georgetown. And the coach so happens to say, this kid looks interesting. Let me reach back out. You know, hey guys, really quickly, footnote, make sure you put your contact information on your film. Right? The coach doesn't want to do all of the work. They want to just be able to have it. They like you, you did your job, you sent them the film. How do I get in touch with this kid? Your Instagram, your Facebook, your email, your phone number. It's a lot of personal information, but again, it's going specifically to that coach or coaches. So I think, you know, the information should be secure. Be careful what you post on social media. On Absolutely. YouTube. You know, you just got to be conscious and aware. Maybe you want to do two versions. One that you put out there with your contact, you know, all of the pertinent information and one that you just kind of leave as, as, as just the film without the information. So that's just a tidbit, but you know, I'm going to name drop. I know you work with Shamari Pons when he was in high school. Um, I know that you work with Shavar Newkirk, you know, they went to St. Joe's and St. John's respectively. And I know you work with many others, but those are the two that jump out. And I remember seeing those films. How long ago was that? Al? Uh, let's see. Um, it would have to be, well, the first kid I started with was a kid by the name of Keith Pinckney Jr. He was the uh, wow. he was the number ten player in his class, okay. and he was the number point guard, number one point guard in his region. Okay, and he being highly recruited. Uh, shout out to my boy Keith Pinckney, yep. uh, senior. 
that was his son. He was like, yo, L, I need some smoke because he was always a visionary. Yeah. So he was like, yo, L, let's start creating these uh, videos for my son now to really because he's a marketer. So he looked at it from the aspect of branding. Yes. You know, but what what he did was he planted a seed because, you know, in the process of covering his son, I was able to cover uh, Aunt, uh, Wiggins. I was able to uh, cover Jalil Okafor. I was I was uh, able to cover the uh, the um, twins, the um, twins yeah, that Har- went to Kentucky. Harrison twins. Yeah, because these all these kids was in his class. So he was right. going to all of these top uh, camps. And all and like uh, the NBA top 100 yep. and all of these places, and he was getting me access. When so what I yeah, so what I realized is video really goes hand in hand with the actual game. You know, back in the day, we didn't have that because it wasn't thought of. It wasn't a part of like how you market, promote, and brand. Now you have eight year olds telling their mom, get this video, mom, I learned a new move. So I'm only saying that to lead to this. I know a couple of kids, Ian, I thank you for even giving me the credit and the the props for just being a part of some of those kids' journey. But you know what people have to understand is now is the time more than ever to now take advantage of the visual. Yeah. Because coaches are not traveling as much. is, is, you know, everything's kind of a little stagnant. We got voting going on right now. We got the pandemic. So even if you go to a park and you have a trainer or you're just working, I think all video right now is priceless. Well, I'm going to say this, Al. I know you're very selective. I know you pick and choose who you want to work with. Your plate is full. If the situation was right and it was the right kid and the right family and you see it's something where you could help. Would you be willing to, to jump back in that realm and maybe create video to help somebody's journey again? Absolutely. I mean, let me tell you something. One of the, one of the, one of the I would have to say the two best experiences I've had mm-hmm. with video in this order was Siobhan Newkirk, mm-hmm. Shamari Pons, and Chris McCullough. Those wow. are the, you know what I mean? Like, it was really like, because I seen when I started with Shavar his sophomore year compared to the end of his junior year when he was on the EYBL circuit. Kid was, was almost a new kid. I mean, like as far as sharpness, um, just the way he moved the ball, just the way he ran the team. I mean, he had, Chris was a, a pro. Terry Laria was a pro. Shep Diallo was a pro. Yeah. That kid, contributed to all three of them getting major looks. Well, guess what, L? You just named three professionals. So if you guys are wondering where to go to uh, get your video chopped up and who understands the journey and how to get there, uh, this guy over here, uh, uh, Blunt Communications, AKA Elvis Blunt, has been there, he's done it. He's uh, been able to help people on their journey. And again, you put it correctly, man, and I think that's, such a humble perspective to say you were a part of the journey, right? You're not taking all of the credit. You're not saying it was just you, but understand those kids will probably attest that that video definitely was a a, a, a compliment to this actual skills. You got to be able to hoop. Like we're not creating no magic tricks because the coaches got to see you in person sooner or later. That's Pete, right. If the video is like, you know, they you, you chopping up all that video. You looking great on the video. Now you got to actually go out and, and, and do it in person. Because, yeah, you got 10 points on the video, but that might have been 10 points from three games. Exactly. We know you. We see you. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and co- I respect and coaches, it. Coaches know now. See, coaches, are, coaches have caught on to that. Yeah. They understand the mixtape game. They understand this kid played seven games, like you said before, he got a two-minute or two-and-a-half-minute video. Right. Right. So the kids got to understand, but more so the parents have to understand. That is just to get the attention. Once right. you get the attention, the kids got to show out. They got you in person, man. So guys, I'm I'm going to summarize it by saying this. If you're, if you're playing in high school games, if you're playing in showcases, if you're playing in camps, get your parents, you know, get your, get, get somebody who shoots video, 
I know it's, you know, you're gonna have to pay for it if you want it high quality, but I think it's worth it, right? Whatever that cost is, the goal is to get a scholarship. So if you contribute a couple of thousand- Let me ask you this, E. So, Hold on. Now, when we do video, what is the purpose of us doing the video for people to do what? To see it, right? Yep. So parents and kids have to understand also that there's a lot of bottom to the top hoops out there. You got key vision, you got a bunch of kids doing something, but my advice to parents, when you are paying for video, if the kid has 123 subscribers or followers, then that means nobody's probably going to see your video. Yeah. So you have to be smart and intelligent when you're dealing with video people, because it's almost like you want to use their platform. You want to use their following so that your child can be seen. So if you're paying somebody, know the service you're getting. Yeah, they can do video. Yeah, they can make a highlight tape. But once they finish it, is it on you now to go recruit the coaches or can they help you with that process? I mean, that's, that's, that's such a valid point, Al. And, you know, and just, just finishing up, you know, this is, a, this is a unique time, especially for you high school and, and, and prep school kids. You know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you guys are at the bottom of the totem pole. And if you're an elite athlete, you're not in the same boat. But as you get lower on the recruiting to totem pole, understand what an offer is, understand what interest is, and understand the sense of urgency you have to have when taking advantage of a good opportunity. Now is not the time to be cute. Now is not the time to wait. Get your situation together, do your research. You got something good on the table, you gotta pounce on it ASAP because you will find yourself next October saying, yo, I'm still waiting for the right opportunity. For young Definitely. men and young men, women, you gotta go when the, when the situation, in this day and age, you know, you're going to yes, have definitely. so much rollover with kids staying in school, JUCO, college, NAIA, NCAA, Division One, Two, Three. They ain't going nowhere. Mm -mm. Nobody ain't rushing to get into the real world unless they got a situation in hand. You know what I mean? That's a whole fact. And guess what? We don't know what's going to happen with the pandemic, so it ain't no jobs out here. Why am yeah. rushing to go get out of school? So you guys got to understand that parents... Be conscious. If you have a high school senior, please take heed to this information. Do not be slow on a draw. If you have something good, please consider it heavily. And if you like it, jump on it. You can't be hesitant. Don't be gun shy. You got the last word, Al. I'd love to give, out, give some props out. OK. Uh, shout out to little Mel Mel. He was on the road. Uh, yep. I've just been watching school. I've been, I've been trolling scooters. Uh, IG, look at that on Lil Mel's videos. It's right. killing. I love to see that, man, because I love to see when people take the time to put that hard work in mm -hmm. and did it manifest when you needed to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shout out to Lil Zai. He just did that marquee camp, the showcase. Yep. Um, shout out to your guys, OSL. Had a great weekend this week. Uh, elaborate a little bit. Yeah, they beat Newman Garetti. Um, and then they beat um, they beat uh, West Town, two national powers perennially. Everybody wanted to see what the new version of OSL looked like. And OSL Prep went two and zero as well, beating. Oh all man, that's players. awesome, man! Shout out to you. I know you was contributed to that big hey, time. And the, the the coaches and the kids did a great job. They got a win over Upper Room Christian, so it's a good start, man. They, they're going into the gauntlet. You can't hide, right? We got to continue to play high level teams and. And, 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 and hopefully from that, you know, the scholarship opportunities will go out. Check out the video on my page. Yeah, there you go. There, yeah, but big shout out to your boy Pete. Big shout out to um, CJ. Uh, my, yeah, everybody, man, that's over there. Because it's like, you know, what I love about that situation also is he being around you, I've seen it. And it didn't stop with Paul Dylan. It's like they're keeping it going, and that's a beautiful thing, man, because, see, when they were seniors, and especially when Paul was a junior and Jay Quan was a freshman, now you're starting to see how you build programs because those freshmen become juniors. And guess what? You lose. Of course, you're losing a kid. You're losing a personality. But the key is not to lose too much of the talent. You don't want that talent to drop so crazy. And culture. And I give 
you guys props. And I say you guys because you're a part of that too. I give you guys props because you guys are planting seeds. I see the work behind the scene. That's what people don't see. They just see OSL coming out. But I see the work behind the scene. And I want to give you guys that kudos over there at OSL, man. Appreciate it, man. And, and again, it's about building culture. And, and yeah. the culture lasts forever. A team maybe just one year and, and, and doesn't you know continue. So uh, hopefully we gave you guys some great information about recruitment, about film, that you guys can you know kind of apply and hopefully will benefit your children in this process. We wish you all the best, man. Continue to consume the content again, YouTube, Spotify, Apple TV, becomtv.com. Um, I mean, we, we, we'll be back next week as always, man. Thank you to all of the supporters. Big shout out to, uh, to D Jones, Jerry Ice, the whole City Legend team. You got the last word, Al. Shout out to the BCOM family. Shout out to God. You already know. <laughs>